iOS 16.2 just released earlier this week, and that means we're getting a new HomeKit architecture. So what exactly does that mean? There's a lot to discuss. Today, I'm gonna to update all of my Apple devices so that I can take advantage of this new HomeKit architecture. I'm gonna bring you along with me. We'll see how this update process goes for me. Uh, we'll see how this update actually affects my HomeKit setup. We'll discuss limitations and potential issues with this new home architecture and hopefully answer any questions you may have. Best case scenario, everything goes smooth and HomeKit comes out on the other side of this update running faster, smoother, and more reliably. Worst case scenario, I have to nuke my entire HomeKit setup and rebuild from scratch. I really hope that doesn't happen. Wish me luck, let's go. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks so much for joining me. My name is Shane, if this is your first time here, and this channel is all about building an easy Apple home smart home with new videos published every Sunday and live streams every Wednesday. At the time of recording this, the official release of iOS 16.2 was just released and I'm about to update all of my devices. Since iOS 16, I've heard from a lot of you having issues with you know, automations not working or running when they're supposed to, or HomeKit just becoming unreliable, Siri not responding well, uh, and the list goes on. So I've been anxiously waiting for this big update that brings us a new underlying home architecture that will apparently improve the performance of your Apple Home smart home, especially for those of us who have lots of HomeKit accessories, like me and like many of you. One of the requirements of the new home architecture Architecture is that all of your devices must be running the latest version of iOS, iPad OS, TV OS, HomePod OS, Watch OS, Mac OS, you know, all that, all the OS's. So I'm gonna start updating everything today. I've got a lot of Apple devices and a lot of family members that I need to make sure get the update also. Chances are I'm probably gonna forget a device or two. And I also actually manage a second home kit home for my grandpa who lives a couple hours away. So we'll see how this goes because I'm not able to update his Apple devices just yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and start updating all of my devices throughout the house. While we're waiting on all my devices to update, let me go ahead and tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Netgear. Now, if you've watched my past videos, you've probably noticed that I am currently using the Netgear Orbi 6E mesh Wi-Fi system for my smart home. That thing is certainly a beast, but today I wanna to share with you their Nighthawk M6 5G mobile hotspot. It's a beast in a little tiny package. With this thing, you can actually get ultra fast, secure 5G internet for your home or take it on the go with you. One thing I really like about this is that it features something called in-home performance mode, which boosts your home Wi-Fi coverage up to 2000 square feet and increases the max speed of the ethernet port on the M6 to 2.5 gigabits per second. To enable in-home performance mode, simply remove the battery, plug it into power, and plug in the ethernet cable to your Wi-Fi router or mesh system. I mean, just check out the Wi-Fi speeds that I'm able to get on my iPhone with the M6 in-home performance mode. Really awesome. And when it's time to head out or travel, I can unplug it, pop in the battery, and have that ultra-fast 5G internet with me on the go. Check out my link below for the Nighthawk M6 mobile hotspot, and big thanks to Netgear for sponsoring today's video. All right, so now that my HomePods, my Apple TVs, iPhones, iPads, and everything is all up to date, it's time to move over to that new architecture and let's see how this goes. In the updates section in your home app settings, you'll see this home upgrade available prompt. I'll tap continue and you'll see here a prompt telling me that some of my devices require a software update and that I won't be able to view or control my smart home until the latest software update is installed on these devices. So I told you I'd probably miss a few. If you do happen to have any older devices that aren't you know, compatible with the latest software, then you'll just lose the ability to use a home app on that device altogether. 
So that's definitely worth noting in case that might affect you. So I'll tap continue anyways, and then I'll get a similar prompt for any of my home members. So again, you wanna make sure you update all the devices and your family's devices before you know, doing this home update if possible. I'll go ahead and keep going. And now I can see that I won't be able to view this other home. Again, this is my grandpa's house. So I'll have to update all of his Apple devices too uh, at a later date. Until then, I'll no longer be able to view this home in the home app. I'll go ahead and upgrade anyways with my fingers crossed. Then the home upgrade is complete after a few minutes. The accessories in the Watley home can now take advantage of improved performance and reliability. That sounds like a good thing. So let's just go ahead and kind of do a little test comparing before and after this update. And I'll come back after, you know, maybe a day or two and let you know how it's all going. <sighs> All right, so I gotta say this new home architecture really does seem to be a good update so far. Uh, you know, I always get a little nervous when we have any major update like this, since I have multiple family members using lots of different home kit accessories throughout my house. But I gotta say this does seem like it's been an improvement, if anything. Response time seems a little snappier in most cases, or in many cases. Devices are loading very quickly when opening the home app. Automations all still seem to be working for me, which is great. I think scenes are running probably a little bit better, especially those that you know control a lot of devices and stuff like that. And I think voice control and my shortcuts are running a little bit smoother too. I don't know, maybe it's all in my head, but uh, definitely no issues. Luckily for me, I wasn't one of the ones having major issues before uh, with iOS 16.1. Uh, my HomeKit home has been pretty stable ever since iOS 16, but there does just seem to be maybe some subtle performance improvements overall here and there since this new home architecture update. Again, I no longer have the ability to access my grandpa's home that I was previously invited to until he updates all his Apple devices, uh, which means I'll have to go do that for him. And you know, he gets on the new architecture. So I'll be sure to get over there one day soon to get his whole house updated and set up. But uh, nice to know that didn't prevent me from being able to update my home and everything's running well here. And similarly, anyone invited to your Apple home that cannot update to the latest software will not be able to access your home anymore. Well, at least on those devices that can't update to the latest software. You can see here on one of my older MacBook Pros, I can no longer access my home on this device at all since it can't update to Mac OS Ventura 13.1. So that's definitely a bummer if you have any older devices that you still use with the home app. If that's you or anyone in your family, you might want to hold off on that home app architecture update until you know, you're able to get devices that can support the current software. And speaking of family, the only issues I noticed when updating my family's devices to the new architecture was that I was getting a mess and I wish I would have recorded it, but I actually, uh, I didn't think to record this, but uh, I was getting a message saying that they could couldn't view my home kit home until all of their other homes were updated to the new architecture, which didn't really make much sense. It kind of freaked me out because I've heard of some other people having issues regarding, uh, you know, their family members with the new architecture. But um, all I did was basically go into their default my home. So every home app typically has a default my home. And if you don't, I would suggest uh, if you're having this issue is go in and just create a new home and then update that to the new architecture. And once I did that, everything was fine and my home populated and everything was working just fine from there on out so we were good to go and i've also read of some other people like i said having some issues you know having their family regain access to their smart home i've seen some people say that renaming the home could help so maybe that's something else to try if you're having some issues but um, again if you're seeing a message similar to that saying all homes must be on the new architecture just go and see if you can switch to like a default my home well, maybe it's a blank home as in my case for both my wife and my daughter and everything with nothing in it uh, so i just had to switch over to that and update that to the new architecture and then we were good to go one big thing to take note of here once you move to this new architecture is that ipads will no longer be able to act as your home kit hub 
So if you rely on that, you just, you might want to wait or figure out, go get your HomePod mini probably. All that aside, I'm happy that this update went pretty smooth for me and my family. My wife hasn't had any issues um, and has kind of just kept on using the smart home like always, which is a plus. And now that Matter has rolled out and we, and we even have devices now that support it, like those recently updated Eve products, this new HomeKit architecture, I feel like is gonna be a good thing moving forward just for the stability of our smart homes. Have you updated to the new home architecture yet? Let me know in the comments below if you have and you know how it's going for you. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for new HomeKit videos and live streams every week. Thanks again to Netgear for sponsoring today's video. Again, check out the link below for that M6 mobile hotspot. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.